Hey everyone. So in this video, I'd like to talk about where exponents fit in the order of operations. So we already talked about how multiplication and division should be performed before addition and subtraction when we try to evaluate an expression. And within these two groups, uh, in multiplication and division, if I see both of these appear in one expression that I'm trying to evaluate, well, uh, we perform that multiplication and division from left to right within the expression. And the same is true for addition and subtraction. If I see multiple examples of addition and subtraction within an expression, well, we evaluate those additions and subtractions from left to right. And on top of that, uh, if we see parentheses, uh, well, these are really a way of telling us what should be evaluated first. So we do parentheses before anything else. And this also goes for grouping symbols. Uh, there are multiple different kinds of grouping symbols out there. Uh, one other example I'd like to bring up besides parentheses are fractions. So fractions split up uh, an expression into a numerator and denominator. And it sort of groups parts of the expression together. And so uh, here it tells you that we should look at the numerator in that fraction first, and the denominator in that fraction uh, separately as well, and then divide the two. And so that grouping should be considered before uh, we perform any of the operations within that fraction. And so let's apply these ideas to two quick examples, just as a quick reminder. So looking at this example on the left, and I definitely encourage you to pause the video and try these examples first. But looking at this example on the left, uh, we should, before we do anything in this expression, we should perform this multiplication and division here in the middle before we do anything about this subtraction and addition. And then within this multiplication and division in the middle, uh, what should we perform first? There's both multiplication and division. Well, actually, we should perform uh, this division first. We do this from left to right. And so here we're going to divide first, and then we're going to multiply after uh, because this division sign is on the left. So here, let's do that. This is going to be the same as 5 minus. So the first thing we're going to do here is this 24 divided by 6. And 24 divided by 6 is 4. So we've got 4. And then we haven't done anything with this 2 on the right yet. So we still have that right. We have times 2 and then plus 1. Next, we still need to perform this multiplication here. Uh, 4 times 2 gives us, gives us 8. And so we have 5 minus 8 plus 1. Now there's only addition and subtraction. So we perform these from left to right. So the subtraction here tells us 5 minus 8. And that's going to give us minus 3, or negative 3. We saw this plus 1. And negative 3 plus 1, well, that's negative 2, right? If I owe $3 and I have 1, I can pay some of that debt off, and I'm left with $2 of debt. And then here in this next example, uh, well, we have some uh, parentheses involved, so we should evaluate those parentheses first. Even though this is addition inside the parentheses, and we know that typically addition goes after multiplication and division, these parentheses tell us to perform this addition first. And so what we get here is 2 plus 36 divided by whatever we get from these parentheses. Well, uh, well that's, that's uh, 9. And then next here we have 2 plus 36 divided by 9. Right? We perform this division before the addition. 36 divided by 9 gives us 4. And so we have 2 plus 4 is 6. So that's the final answer. So recently, we learned how to evaluate expressions involving exponents. And I like to talk about where exponents fit into this picture of order of operations. Well, we still do parentheses before anything else. Parentheses and other grouping symbols. And immediately after we work out our parentheses, work through any different grouping symbols, um, we perform 
exponents. Exponents happen right after. They're second on this list of things to do. And then after exponents, uh, we perform multiplication. And division. And here these are you know on the same level. Uh, here this is done from left to right. And then lastly, addition and subtraction come afterwards. And again, we said that this happens from left to right. Um, and so uh, sometimes you'll see this, uh, an acronym for, for the order of operations. You'll see this acronym PEMDAS as a way of memorizing how you should evaluate an expression. And that's really because uh, we have this P for parentheses and grouping symbols, E for exponents, M and D for multiplication and division, and then A and S lastly for addition and subtraction. This is telling us that uh, we should uh, perform this order of operations when we're trying to evaluate an expression. Again, with multiplication and division on the same tier or the same level and addition and subtraction uh, on the following level. So now that we've described how to follow the order of operations with exponents involved too, uh, let me ask you to pause the video and try out this example. And here when you're ready, we can resume and go over this. So I'm going to write down the acronym again, PEMDAS, just to serve as a reminder for how we can evaluate this expression in the right way. So the first thing we want to do is we want to evaluate parentheses, right? This 7 plus 1. This is, uh, everything else is going to be the same, but I'm going to evaluate the 7 plus 1 to get 8, right? Plus 4 squared. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to evaluate uh, these exponents. Right? So exponents are going to come next. And that comes out to be 5 minus 3 times 8. And then 4 squared right here. This is, this is really the same as uh, 4 times 4, which is 16. So I'm going to rewrite that there, plus 16. And now we have multiplication and division to perform. Well, just multiplication in this example, we have 5 minus 3 times 8 is going to give us 24 plus 16. And then lastly, we perform the addition and subtraction from left to right. All right so this is going to be 5 minus 24 is negative 19 plus 16. And then negative 19 plus 16, well, that's minus 3. So the next expression I have is 3 times 2 cubed. And so if I want to evaluate this, let me again write down my acronym PEMDAS to help us out in evaluating this using order of operations. And so there are two operations I see here. One is exponentiation, and the other is multiplication. And our acronym tells us that we perform exponentiation before multiplication. And so if I want to evaluate this, well, this is really going to be the same as 3 times the exponentiation. And that's going to be applied to just that 2. This is going to be 3 times 2 cubed, or 2 times 2 times 2. And so if I really perform that exponentiation all the way out, this is going to be 3 times, well, 2 times 2 is 4. And then times 2 again is going to give us 8. Right? So 3 times 8. And 3 times 8, that's 24. And so that's our final result from this, uh, this example here, is that 3 times 2 cubed is 24. And so the main point I really want to make here is that, and this is a very common mistake I see happen, is that uh, that, exponenti that exponentiation is only being applied to that 2. Uh, it's not cubing that 3. That 3 is, in some sense, being sort of separated away by that multiplication. Right, so here, this is this 3 times 2 cubed. This is not equal to 6 cubed. This is a very different expression. 
right? Six cubed would be six times six times six. And six times six, that's 36. And times six again, I believe that gives us 216. This is very different than what we got above. And so what's the big difference? Well, here, uh, six cubed is kind of like saying two cubed and three cubed multiplied together. So it's essentially cubing that three as well. And that's really what we don't want to happen here. Uh, the multiplication sort of separates out that three away from being exponentiated. So I've got another two examples here. Let me ask you to again try these examples out yourself first and then we can try them out together. So in this first example, and again I'm going to write our acronym out, PEMDAS, we're going to perform the uh, parentheses first to give us two times seven squared minus, and then in parentheses, we still have to follow the order of operations. And so how should we go about evaluating what's inside the parentheses here? Well, we have multiplication, we have addition, we have exponentiation. And so what happens first is that exponentiation, right, before the multiplication or the addition. So we've got this five squared here that we wanna evaluate as 25. And then next we have two times seven squared minus, uh, well we still have to perform this parentheses before uh, what's going on outside of the parentheses. So we still have to follow order of operations here to give us, uh, well the multiplication would have to happen next to give us 27, right? Nine times three is 27 plus this 25. And so still working through these parentheses we have uh, 27 plus 25 that's 52. And actually I can write these without parentheses now because we've just got a number here. So two times seven squared minus 52. So we've got multiplication, exponentiation, and subtraction. Well, what's gonna happen first in this list is gonna be the exponentiation. And again, that's gonna happen just to the seven, not to the two that's being multiplied. And so this is going to be two times well, what's seven squared? That's seven times seven, right? That's seven squared is equal to seven times seven, which is 49. So we've got two times 49 minus 52. And then we perform the multiplication next. So the two times 49 gives us 98 minus 52, and then the subtraction tells us that we get, well, 98 minus 52, I can imagine taking away the 51st to give me 48, and then subtracting away two after that to give us 46. And that's the result of this, uh, the evaluating this expression here using order of operations. Now let's take a look at this next example. So here we have this big fraction bar that really groups our numerator into one big, uh, one big group and then our denominator into another big group. And so we want to evaluate these separately before we do anything between them. And so here, maybe let's, let's do this one at a time actually. Maybe I'll look at, uh, I'll write down the numerator first, two to the fourth minus negative eight times three. And then we can work through the denominator afterwards. So how do we do this? Well, we perform the exponents first, right? Uh, there are parentheses here, but those parentheses, uh, they always don't really say anything. They don't tell us to perform any different actions. They're just sort of separating, uh, identifying that we were dealing with this negative eight here. So there's nothing more to be done inside these parentheses. We wanna perform the exponents next. And so two to the power of four, well, this is, uh, two times two times two times two, which I know this gives us four, eight, 16. This is 16. And then we have minus negative eight times three. Well, next, before the subtraction we do, we want to perform the multiplication that's here, negative eight times three. So this gives us 16 minus and then negative eight times three is negative 24. 
And then lastly, when we perform the subtraction here, well, subtracting is like adding the opposite, right? I can rewrite this as 16 plus the opposite of the following term. Well, the opposite of negative 24 is positive 24. So this comes out to be positive 40. 16 plus 24 is 40. And so this here, this is the numerator. I'll write this here as the numerator. And then the denominator, well, that's 21 minus 15 divided by 3. And here we perform the division before the subtraction. So this gives us uh, 21 minus, well, 15 divided by 3 is 5. So this is 21 minus 5, that's 16. This is our denominator. And so ultimately, our fraction is 40 over 16. And this can be reduced. I know uh, some numbers that divide both the numerator and denominator are, are 4. right? I can divide out 4 from the top and the bottom, and, and I get an equivalent fraction. So this gives us 10 over 4. And actually, this can be reduced further. I can divide out 2 from the numerator and the denominator to get 5 over 2. So this is the final answer. This is the result of evaluating this fraction that we started with. So here's one last example. Now let me ask you to try it out before we do it together. So before we begin, let me again write our acronym for our order of operations, PEMDAS. And we want to begin by performing parentheses. And so here, the first thing we should do is we should subtract away the 9 and the 4. Right? So we have 2 plus 3 times 5 squared. Now the next step in our order of operations is to perform the exponents. And so the next thing we should do is we should square this 5. And again, let me reiterate that that square is only happening to the 5. Uh, we have multiplication here from this 3 but that multiplication really separates out that 3 from being exponentiated. And so 5 squared is just 5 times 5, which is 25. And so this is 2 plus 3 times 25. And now the next thing on our list of things to do is to perform the multiplication. And so we get uh, 2 plus 3 times 25 is 75, right? 25 plus 25 is 50, plus 25 again is 75. And then lastly, 2 plus 75 is 77. So this is our result from evaluating our expression. And so I'd like to make another warning here. Um, so in the process of evaluating this expression, we had to compute what 9 minus 4 squared is equal to. And we, you know, following order of operations, we subtracted 9 and 4 to get 5, and then we squared this to get 25. And this is completely correct. So there's nothing wrong with what I've written out here. But something I see a lot is when people try and evaluate 9 minus 4 squared, sometimes people try to say that this is equal to, and, and it's not equal to, uh, sometimes people try to say this is equal to 9 squared minus 4 squared. I see this mistake happen a lot, that is. And it's a very natural mistake to make. You might believe that you can distribute this 2 across each of the terms as an exponent, um, but it turns out you can't. Right? If we try and do this, we get 9 squared is 81, 4 squared is 16, and if we subtract these away, well, if I subtract away the 10 from the 16, uh, I get 71. And if I subtract away the 6 left over, uh, I get 65. And this is very different from the expression or the, the value we know is correct from evaluating that part of the expression. And so I just want to emphasize that uh, when we have addition or subtraction in our parentheses, we can't just distribute that exponentiation across each of the terms. Uh, it feels like it should be the case, but it would be incorrect to do so.